Hello everyone. I've done a number of videos on this channel about protein structure, about genes, DNA, species and the biological species concept. But in this video, what we want to do is focus in on how a knowledge of protein structure can be used to make actual genetic comparisons. And say, ultimately, how closely related one species is to another in terms of the genetics. Now there's one key thing that really underpins this, and it's that similar organisms essentially have similar protein structures. And we can compare this in two ways, and the two ways I've outlined here on the screen. One is via um, analysis of the amino acid sequence. Of course, amino acids are the monomers that make up proteins. So we can look at the amino acid sequence and see if there's any similarities or differences there. And the second is by what we call immunological comparison. So looking at things through the immune system, and that will come on to a bit later. What I want to do is start with number one. So we're going to look at the amino acid sequence analysis. Now, just beneath that title, I've got a picture just with six species and just a sample. It's just um, a, a few amino acids in a chain. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven amino acids in a chain for each of the six species. Now, a lot of the amino acids have the name shortened to just three letters. So GLU is uh, glutamine, VAL, valine. Um, MET, methionine. So we've just shortened them to three letters in this image. And if you just simply look at them and try and spot similarities and differences, if we go for, for example, if we look at species one and compare to species two, species one has a VAL here, valine, but two and three have MET, methionine. So we could say, and in fact species two and three have the exact same sequences, so we could say that species two and three are more closely related and in fact have are more closely related to one another than they are compared with species one. If you look at species four you can see that has a VAL like species two and three but it has a TYR in the third place in the sequence which is different to species one two and three. So again you can pick up on a difference there. And that is simply all there is to amino acid sequence analysis. You just look at the sequence and you look at the number of similarities or differences. And if you take species 5, for example, we can see we've got a TYR here. But we've also got an ILE here. So if we were to compare species 5 to species 1, you can see it's likely that they're not very closely related because we've got two amino acids that are different within that sequence. And if you've watched my videos on amino acid sequence protein structure, you know that slight changes in the amino acid sequence or a change in the primary structure ultimately will alter the tertiary or even quaternary structure that a protein um, has and thus alters its function. So essentially what we're saying is related organisms have similar base sequences in their DNA and so similar amino acid sequences in their proteins and the number of similarities or differences in the sequence is simply counted. Now, I've put a table onto the right-hand side, just a little bit of information about haemoglobin. Just, just, it's an interesting fact, but it really adds to this particular uh, part of the video. Adult haemoglobin actually contains two alpha chains of 141 amino acids and two beta chains of 146 amino acids. Now, a total of 287 amino acid positions are therefore there to compare against other species. Now, of the 287 positions, 282 of these amino acids are exactly the same in the four species that we've got in this particular image, the human, the chimpanzee, the gorilla, and the orangutan. There's differences in only five of the amino acids. Now, if we look at this picture, we can see we're considering here both the alpha chain and the beta chain. And we're looking at amino acids at position 11, 23 on the alpha chain and 87, 104, 115 on the beta chain. Now the table shows in blue places where the amino acids are the same as on the human alpha and the beta chains. And it's quite clear to see, I think, that the human and the chimp have exactly the same amino acid sequences in their haemoglobin. You can see on the alpha chain, they both have alanine and glutamic acid. On the beta, they both have uh, threonine, arginine, and proline. Whereas you can see, if you look at the gorilla, you've got these key differences in position 23 here, position 104 here, for example. 
So what you could say is that the, essentially the chimp and the human are more closely related. I need to be careful because it's not saying clearly that the chimp and the human are exactly the same species. It just says genetically, if we to make a genetic comparison, they are similar. And we've got to remember this is only data for one molecule, uh, haemoglobin. So we're only looking at haemoglobin in this particular table. But from this haemoglobin analysis, you could uh, hypothesize that human and chimps are more closely related than, the, than humans and gorillas and human orangutans, simply because of this um, similarity in their amino acid sequence. Now, amino acid sequencing can take a long time. I think scientists became aware, I think by about 1960 or so, that different species had different amino acid sequences in the in the blood protein called albumin. Now, albumin has 584 amino acids, which is actually makes it a fairly small protein. Now, scientists wanted a quick way to compare sequences in albumin, this blood protein. And this leads us into number two, method number two of making a genetic comparison, and it's immunological comparisons. So it's using this uh, blood protein albumin in an experiment to essentially work out how similarly or how closely related two organisms are. Now this relies on the principle that antibodies of one species will respond to specific antigens on proteins in the blood serum of another species. So I'll just say that again. This relies on the principle that antibodies of one species will respond to specific antigens on proteins in the blood serum of another species. So let's talk through the process of how this one works. Now, my, it's not the best at drawing, but let's just quickly draw a little rabbit here. The eye. This is by no means at all a decent... I've never really drawn one of these before in the video. Let's just say there's a rabbit. Not not the best uh, at all. In fact, I'm sure I've probably missed a leg or two off. But there we've got a little rabbit. And what you actually do is inject into that rabbit some human serum. Now in that serum, essentially, is pure human albumin. So we're injecting, so if you think of this in steps, we inject the human serum into that rabbit. Now the rabbit will go on to produce antibodies against that human albumin against that human protein because it's a, that albumin is a foreign body. So the rabbit will go on to produce antibodies against the human albumin. And then those anti-human albumin antibodies can be collected and purified. So what we're then going to do is essentially if we imagine drawing this and it's a very crude sketch, but what we're going to do once we've got those anti-human albumin antibodies produced, we're going to extract them. So we want to extract some of the rabbit serum. And that has anti-human antibodies within it. Now, once we've got that serum, that rabbit serum can be added to the serum of other species. So if we were to draw, let's just draw three test tubes here. And let's just say, now I'll quickly colour this in and then I'll explain why I've drawn these tubes at differing levels. So we've got three test tubes here. We've added to the test tubes uh, serum from the rabbit and also serum from three other species. Let's say this first one 
serum from human. Let's say the second one is a serum from a chimp. And the third one is from a dog. Now what you find is that an increasing amount of precipitation that forms shows a closer evolutionary relationship. So I have the three test tubes here, human, chimp and dog. Now if we were to think about this logically, we have anti-human albumin antibodies collected and purified from the rabbit. Those would respond clearly to antigens on human albumin. So if you have human albumin with, hu with the human antigens on essentially, they would clearly agglutinate and clump or form this precipitate with anti-human albumin antibodies that are in the rabbit. So clearly what it shows by, by the fuller green test tube essentially are meaning a greater level of precipitation. So with human albumin in our first test tube sample we get a very dense precipitate which is what we'd expect because clearly the rabbit was making anti-human albumin antibodies to our human albumin antigens essentially. And what we're saying is that the more precipitation the greater the evolutionary relationship. So the chimp has more than the dog, more of a, as shown in this test tube, more of a precipitate formed than the dog. And what that's saying is that the chimp is more closely related to us than the dog is as an organism, as a species rather. Because the anti-human albumin antibodies from the rabbit have responded slightly greater or to a greater level to the chimp to the chimpanzee antigens than to the antigens on the proteins belonging to the dog. So there we have a very simple way of making a genetic comparison using proteins using immunological studies. So essentially we're injecting human serum or essentially we're injecting the rabbit with pure human albumin. The rabbit is producing antibodies against the human albumin and that rabbit serum with those antibodies is extracted and it's added to other species and the greater the level of precipitation that's formed the greater we can say that there's a some kind of evolutionary link there evolutionary relationship now let's just think about interpreting this information because we need to think carefully about the information that you obtain from both amino acid sequence analysis and these immunological studies now, I haven't drawn a test tube with orangutan albumin, but one thing you'd actually find is that there are more differences between orangutan human albumin than there are between the human chimp albumin. That kind of, you, if you look at the amino acid sequence analysis, the picture to the right, the table, I said there was differences in amino acids, and that's again essentially confirmed in these immunological studies. I've missed it off here, but there are greater differences seen between human and orangutan albumin than, again, human and chimp albumin. And this could suggest that orangutans were the first apes to diverge from the evolutionary line that led to humans. But obviously for this kind of thing, you want some other evidence to support that kind of conclusion. But this video was purely just to outline how we use a knowledge of protein structure, or use proteins essentially, to make genetic comparisons. We can either Firstly, look at the amino acid sequence and just compare the position of particular amino acids and see which are similar, which are different for certain species. And the second is using an immunological comparison, using a study of albumin. And you use anti-human antibodies producing, uh, produced in rabbit serum and look at the precipitate or the amount of precipitate that it forms when that serum is added to the serum of other particular species. Okay, hope all that helps.